Hey everyone, please make them match and hope this video finds you doing super well. Got a really interesting video here for you guys today. We're gonna, we're gonna be taking a look at the Half-Life VR Jeff mechanic, which is honestly one of my favorites in the whole game. And definitely let me know down in the comments below if there's any specific mechanics that you found particularly enjoyable in that game. I just have to say, I think like the beauty of it was the fact that it's super simplistic and it has a lot of really small mechanics that all really kind of seamlessly fit together. And this is definitely going to be one of them. We're specifically going to be looking at the navigation side. So setting up a mini Jeff here, if you will, uh, that can walk around and quote unquote respond to collision detections, if you will. And this project here is available on GitHub. So I just Kind of toss that out there this video will be specifically we'll go through just kind of how you can go ahead and set it up but there's also an example scene with everything kind of put together and we're also using vrtk so definitely go check these guys out uh, if you haven't done so already and you can build on this project using kind of all of their how-to guides and everything that comes with vrtk4 so super cool there and last thing i should mention is we are using steam vr in this specific uh, example project however there's nothing really stopping this from working on say headsets like oculus quest so if you want to get it to work with oculus quest you'll just have to put this sdk in and then it'll go work uh, I'll go ahead and leave an Amazon affiliate link down below in the description if you want to go ahead and help support out the channel. Uh, but that pretty much covers it with those links there and we can dive straight into Unity. So if you're following along with this specific video, this is what you will get when you download the example project off of GitHub bunch of steam vr stuff that you can see here uh, and this is kind of this jeff vr specifically is where everything is we've got some materials we've got the model here everything here that like as far as this mesh goes was all actually just a quick thing that i mocked up in pro builder and highly recommend pro builder if you ever want to build out just some really simple example scenes it's free it's really easy to use so uh, definitely recommend doing that and then as far as scenes go, so if we go to scenes, uh, there are two scenes here, the skeleton, which is what we're gonna be putting together real quick. I mean, there's not a lot going here. It's just mainly to show integrating with the scripts. And then this other one here is this Jeff VR scene, which has all of the assets just to show this working in action. So here we have a couple cubes. These are gonna be our kind of quote unquote breakable objects, if you will, where if you toss them, when they collide, it'll create the collision effect that requires this guy to go run around. So uh, that's really all there is to it. It's really simple in that regard. And I just wanted to create a little bit of space here between me and Jeff so that it doesn't come running into you straight away. Uh, and yeah, but that's kind of the, the gist of it. And everything else in this kind of scene here is just kind of boilerplate. So we have the environment, we have Jeff here, and he's got some small animations associated with that, some lighting, and we've got SteamVR here. So this is where you would go ahead, swap this out for Oculus if you wanna use Oculus. And we have our tracked alias, which is associated with VRTK, as well as the grab inputs, which we need to use to provide into VRTK. So that's pretty much this. It's fairly straightforward here and then we just need to really put our scripts together, add our breakable objects, and then go from there. And now we've already got a scene that works with Jeff set up. And for this, we have kind of four key scripts here. So one, I've kind of put together a generic velocity estimator. So that's useful for VRTK purposes. So that's already actually integrated into here on the player object. So if you go to the left or the right hand, scroll down here, you'll see this generic velocity tracker. And so that generic velocity tracker gets hooked into our linked alias, which then gets hooked into VRTK. So you can see the left and right hand both there. And that's super useful just to send the velocity data whenever we wanna throw an object and make sure that that gets thrown with the correct velocity. So fairly straightforward here. We also have a grab action. And what this does, we can actually, I'll go ahead and open it up. Uh, but you can also see it here on the right. What this does is again, another VRTK specific code. And I've, I've shown all of this in kind of 
previous videos. So uh, if you want kind of more in-depth stuff on VRTK with Steam VR, I'll go ahead and link to that in the iCard so you can definitely check that out. Uh, but super straightforward here, all we're doing is taking the SteamVR 2.0 data, uh, specifically this kind of button action, if you will, and we pass it on to a receive, and we're using VRTK Boolean action. So there are tutorials on that on the Academy. Definitely go, I recommend go checking that out. Uh, but all that does really is just, it's a button action that allows us to know when we've grabbed something. So we use that for that specific purpose. And that is kind of everything that's currently set up. And then we have two separate scripts here, this move to and this breakable. So let me go ahead and open both of those guys up. And again, you can see here, there's not a lot of code here to actually get this set up. So let's first take a look at this move to function. So the way navigation kind of in general works is thanks to Unity's navigation system. You can actually go ahead and find this under Windows. AI navigation, and that pulls up this panel right here. Go ahead, drag it wherever you want. It really doesn't matter. And under under normal circumstances, you actually won't see any of the things that are here. Uh, the reason I did this actually in advance is because setting up navigation, especially on bigger scenes, can take a while. So it's just kind of useful to have everything set up so that when I'm recording, my computer is not dying left and right. But the, the, the premise here is you take your environment. So let's say, for example, we're taking a look at the floor here, right? And normally for pretty much any object that you create. So if I go ahead, say, let's create a cube, random, just a random cube, right? You'll notice that it's set to dynamic. There's kind of the basic stuff here, but this is not set to static. In order to use navigation, you, you specifically need to set these objects to static. So you can either just kind of click and then that will make the whole object static. Or specifically, uh, let, let's say you don't want all of these settings and maybe it's static for some cases, but not other cases. What you can do is you can specifically set it to navigation static. And that's really all we care about here is navigation static. And I'll just go ahead and delete that for now. but just so that you guys know, that is what was set here specifically. And if you don't do that, then your navigation will not work and you can't use this navigation pane. But since we have gone ahead, set the, the static, I believe I just turned something off. No, okay, we're good. Um, since we've gone ahead, set this as static, it's I've already gone, gone, gone ahead and pre-built the navigation mesh here. To do that, you would have just gone to this bake section and then that will create this nav mesh. And all a nav mesh is just really simply is just areas that the AI can use for navigating. And so normally you have these areas here. This even works on stairs because we've kind of defined the slope and the stairs here fit that slope pretty well. And so it just kind of hooks up these areas together so that we can use that for navigation purposes. On top of which, we also have here these links, uh, specifically these are called off mesh links, and they allow you to connect areas that have bigger height so that let's say you're at the top here and you want to jump down, your AI can do that. So that's what's going on here and what's kind of been set up and that's kind of also why I wanted these stairs in the scene just to kind of highlight that. And uh, we, you also can just kind of set your AI parameters here, your agent parameters. You can have multiple of these, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But that's, that's what we've gone here to do for navigation. So once you have any navigation mesh set up, whether it's this environment, whether it's another environment, you can then use it. And that's what this move to script is doing. So on update, you can see we get a nav mesh agent, which I'll show in just a second we can set a destination for it. And then this code here is just doing some animation running. So it's very, very straightforward. So we need a nav mesh agent for this to work. Luckily, I've already gone ahead and set that up here. And again, that's very simple. It's literally just a built-in component with Unity, which is really nice. I can go ahead, drag our move to script onto there. And what we need to do is set a goal. So if we go ahead here, drag this goal on, I'll also go ahead and drag our animator on so that 
we can just see the animations in action. And with that, if I go ahead, click play. All right, so once I've gone ahead, click play, we have this goal object and I can just kind of drag it around. And you can see this is literally just an empty game object, but we're using its position here to drag this guy around and it doesn't actually have to exactly be aligned with the mesh. That'll just kind of go to the closest destination on the nav navigation object. So that's really convenient. And let's say we want to drag it up to the player. And also go ahead and show this kind of off mesh support. So if I go through that here, you'll see that he jumps off thanks to those off mesh support links that we've have set up. And again, this object is kind of floating randomly in space. So it just kind of projects this onto our nav mesh plane and it just gets the closest uh, position. So uh, super straightforward there, but that's kind of all we needed to do thanks to this nav mesh agent to go ahead and just get him to move around. It's actually like just a few lines of code, which is really, really convenient there. Literally just setting an, uh, a destination and then boom. So that that kind of sets up our move to. And then next we just need to, now that we know this guy will move only to wherever this goal is, we can now set up code to move the goal based on breakables. So to do that, we just need to create some interactable objects and you can grab those, if I can type, interactable. Uh, we can grab, let's say this guy. So this is a VRTK interactable object. Let me drag this a little bit closer to our player here. And what this is, is quite literally, it's an object that we can grab and we can toss around thanks to the interactor that's already been set up here in this scene with VRTK. Uh, you can see that interactor under the tracked alias. If you go down to, oh, it's right here. If you go down to the left controller alias, click on interactor, you will find the interactor set up and then this is what allows you to go ahead and grab objects. So for this, I'm actually gonna set this down to like 0.1.1.1. And that here is just one interactable object, which is perfect. And you can see here, there's a rigid body associated with it. There is a collision detection node associated with it. And that's actually kind of the core component that we are looking for. And specifically, if we just drag this breakable script onto here, and I'll, again, I'll, I'll, I'll walk through what the breakable script does, but this breakable script is basically responsible for uh, detecting when this object collides with something. And then also more importantly, sending the goal, moving this goal so that our quote unquote Jeff actually moves towards the new goal location based on wherever we've collided. So to do that, we just quite literally just drag our goal onto here and that, that really mu pretty much does it. If we take a look at the code, there's, there's not too much going on here. So again, we have this public goal variable. Uh, we can set whether or not we want to set the goal. Um, and that's just kind of useful if you have a layer mask. So specifically, we don't want this to, to, we don't want Jeff to move when we pick up an object. We only want to do it when we actually uh, drop an object. So uh, that's kind of the kind of nuance there. And so you can set the goal based on whether or not you're, you're being grabbed or not by, by the hands. And, and then right here you can see, so if we are colliding with something that is not the hands, then we'll go ahead and set the goal. And that, that's really all there is to this. You just have to make sure that you are on an object that has a rigid body because the rigid body is the one responsible for setting this on collision enter, on collision exit. So let's go ahead, run this. All right, so now that we have this breakable object here, I'm just gonna go ahead, drop it here. And boom, you see that he starts to move around uh, to kind of wherever we collide. Granted, this is not the, the most clean setup here, but it, it does the job. 
and again just drop it boom he moves so that kind of just kind of illustrates what's going on here again we we basically we're just kind of we have some extra steps here now uh one thing to know is i actually kind of hacked this a little bit if you want it to work only with the hands um and not kind of when i drop it together set the set goal to false and then it'll kind of work through this loop if you just kind of want it to happen quickly in editor you can set this back to true and then it'll work kind of on any collision really and so yeah that's really all you need to do to go ahead and get this started i there are nuances here so of course you can destroy objects whenever you get to on collision exit if you want to be even more efficient with it you can use object pools to basically uninstantiate it and then reinstantiate it wherever you so please a lot of different things that you can use to like build on this project but if you're just kind of looking for a prototype that's what this is so that pretty much just kind of highlights the things i just kind of want to show really how few like how how little code you need to actually kind of get a setup like this to work and yeah it's pretty straightforward so hopefully you found this useful if there are any things you would like to see built on top of this project definitely let me know in the comments below uh curious to see what you guys think and if you could do me a favor and smash the like button that really does help out the channel a ton and yeah so thanks so much for watching and until next time this has been fuse man and i'm signing out